Authenticity is be your damn self. Whether yeah. people like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's who you are, that's it. And I think that applies in a hotel construct. Like, if you're gonna do something, do it well and be all in on it. Yeah. Don't just dip your toe in the water. Bashar and Kate are practice hospitality. Visit the lounge to talk about starting a new business during a global pandemic, collaborating with incredible designers, and how they have taken hotel management from a transactional experience to an emotional one. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to never miss an episode of In the Design Lounge. Let's go into it. Let's talk about the core of practice hospitality. What is your mission? So at its really base, it's a pretty simple idea, right? We are going to manage hotels, which happens every day. And there are a lot of great smart people in the industry that do it. And when we set out to start it, we felt the model was somewhat upside down. And the analogy we use is when you have a baby, it is your heart, your soul. You care about it so much. When you go to find a babysitter or a nanny, you don't ask them to manage your baby. So we thought, well, when you're doing a hotel, if you're doing it right, it's heart, it's soul, it's sleepless nights, you agonize over every single detail. And at the end, you take this baby that has taken your money, your heart, your soul, blood, sweat, and tears, and hand it to someone to manage. It seemed so cold and transactional. So we said our goal was to try to do this differently in a way that we want to convince you that we really do care about your baby and we want to treat it like you would. Hospitality is how you make people feel and that's the piece that we focus on the most. We're completely rethinking how we are approaching designing the experience for people that work for us. So you kind of come and work in a hotel for a few reasons. There's people who come and they work at the hotel and they want a solid, honest day's work for you know good pay. They want to be able to go home to their families. It's, and they want to work there for a long time. Um, you have people who come in who are college students or they're in between or maybe they're in a band and they, they really want flexibility and they want to be able to be supported in pursuing their other pursuits. And this is a, a point of reference in their life, but maybe they're not going to work for you forever. And then you have people who come in and who want to rise through the ranks. They want to become hoteliers. They want to, you know, go up, grow in the in the company, those are very different perspectives, very different point of views. They're all individuals, but we can we can think about how we design the experience of working for us for those different constituencies, so we can deliver what they each need. So, I mean, my goal is that you work for us, and then you go away, and you, it's the best job you ever had. Whether you work for us for a summer or for 20 years, it should be the kind of job you want to refer people to. I think that's how we're going to. I used to work back. there. Uh, like yeah. I said, that's that badge of honor. Well, you guys obviously have, have great timing because <laughs> you decided to, to launch the best or the worst timing exactly. in history. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because I have the conversation all the time with someone in it, whether it's in a hospitality space, a creative space, artistic, artistic space. This time is going to make you or break you. And I feel like for those that are adept and can navigate and pivot, it's like it's almost like when people come from New York. They're like, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Exactly. Right. If you can make it right Through now, the, yeah. you can make Great it point. at any time. Great point. So, so how was that launching, you launched this company during a pandemic? I mean, this has been in the making pre-pandemic. Yeah. The, really, the pandemic has allowed us the opportunity to pause and kind of take, look introspectively and say, we've lost sight as an industry of what we do. It became an industry about things, not people. We, we wanted to out art the next hotel and out design the next hotel and out and out and out. And it became this arms race that no one was going to win. And it was sort of lost on the, on the guests at some point because it became so overwhelming. So we said, we had the opportunity to slow down and think about it more and say, what's really important? And then this idea that's, you know, this, these empty words that get thrown around like conscious capitalism, right? The idea that if me being successful means everyone else has to be crushed, well, that's a broken model. I'm not interested in being successful that way. So we started thinking about how do we really look at things differently to allow us to lift people up along the way and address the issues that are staring us in the face. Gender equality, diversity, inclusion, all these things that tend to be shoved to the side. 
So I don't mean to make it sound heavy, but I think fundamentally for us, it, it, I often preach, historically I have about the industry, and I felt pre, pre-pandemic before I started this that I wasn't practicing, I was being a hypocrite. Yeah. I say one thing and do another because I didn't have control. So now with this new venture- You became almost a part of the machine. Exactly, and yeah. now with this new venture, I wanted to be with people that thought the same way, and not, not thought exactly the same way, but saw the world the, the same way. Our goals and what's important to us was consistent, and that's where you can, in fact, practice what you preach. And sort of you see where the name and the idea from it came is that we keep talking a big game, let's deliver. Yeah. If we say we're going to take care of our people, let's take care of our people. Not talk about it, but actually do it. Well, and I think to your, to your point, what we were talking about, like the pandemic actually forced that pause. Absolutely. Like I feel like in certain aspects and the benefits we're going to see, maybe not even now, right? Maybe in 2023, 2024, sure. where it forced us to look at things differently. It forced us to look at, okay, are we actually practicing what we preach? Are we being a hypocrite? Are we, are we walking our talk? And let me tell you something about the pandemic, the idea of this pause. I think there are a lot of things that happened because of the pandemic that will go away after the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? We're all caught up in the hand sanitizer and all that, and all that business will be old news. Yeah. To me, what's interesting are the things that the pandemic didn't cause, but accelerated. Yes. Like you think about this Zoom thing, right? Exactly. We've always done it. No. We knew it was going to evolve. It may have taken it 10 years to get to this level. The pandemic forced it to happen within a year. Oh, right. It's real. It's here. It's going to stay. What else has the pandemic done that are good things that have been accelerated because of it, not caused because of it? And we say in our company that we trends by definition, a trend is here for a short time. It comes and it goes. Human behavior, on the other hand, takes such a long time to develop, to evolve. Humans don't change overnight. So, so the pandemic has allowed us to really observe human behavior at a more micro level to see how humans interact with this world around them. Like, how do we want to work going forward? And like one example, this work from home business, right? Or work from hotel. Clearly, people that were in the rat race have now realized, you know what? There's more to life than work. I want to know what school kid my kids go to, and I want to meet my neighbor, and I want to eat at the local restaurant. We used to take pride of, oh, I'm on the road three. I was one of those guys. I'm on the road 300 days a year, and I was like proud, right? Yeah, that was a badge of honor. Now almost it's a badge of shame. So I think as you observe that, you say, well, how will that affect how people live? How will it affect how they travel? And how can we be on the forefront of that movement? I want to dive more into the positive as well, but then obviously let's, let's touch on the real stuff, the challenges. Clearly the biggest detriment of the pandemic beyond the obvious, particularly in some industry, is this, this, you know, think about this. Disneyland has closed three times in history. World War II, JFK, and 9-11. It's been closed for over a year. So when you think about the magnitude of what's happened to our industry, it is mind-blowing. It's truly mind-blowing across the globe. And again, forget the hotel. The hotel is a building. You close the door, end of story. It's the humans that have been displaced as a result of it. So we're spending a lot of time now as an industry thinking about how do we bring them back? How do we ensure they have a better livelihood going forward, that they're able to weather a storm? And ultimately, a lot of them have left the industry. We have amazing people that couldn't wait around, right? And they had to go find other things. How do we bring them back? So to, to me, the single biggest detriment that the pandemic has cost our industry is the human cost, the human capital cost, the lives that have been decimated as a result of it. So talk about your guys' first collab, Hotel Kali. Tell me about that. How did that go about? Uh, how was it like you know, bring, you know, know, launching that program? Um, we started working on Hotel Kali last summer. It opened in December in Atlanta in Buckhead. Okay. Um, which I was, like Atlanta. I'm a fan. Atlanta. I'm a fan. It's a great city. You know, we started working on this project. We were, we were creating a... Hotel Coley is a member of the Autograph Collection. Um, it's Marriott Hotel. Uh, every one of those are individually designed, which is kind of really in our wheelhouse. It's what we do. So it was a fun project. But we were looking at how do we develop a brand that's going to be relevant and resonate for Buckhead, 
which you know, you know, Atlanta, you know, Buckhead, it's a place where people come to show up, show, show off, up. show That's out. Right. Yeah. So you got Absolutely. It. It's a place where people come to celebrate and kind of put their feathers on, you know, get, like yeah. it's no, a little like, swagger. You know, it's, it's a little bit different than Portland. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just, a little, <laughs> just a little, just a little. So the, the locality, I mean, absorbing that kind of yes. going in, it was interesting doing it during the pandemic because it was a bit of a challenge to really dig in. You know, we, we connected with local partners. We, we had to kind of get our arms around what is that essence of Buckhead and, and that style and uh, how can we translate it into a brand? So we worked with an amazing company there in Atlanta um, and developed this concept uh, about causing celebration. Really, we thought post-pandemic, when people start traveling, and we're, we're a hotel, Hotel Coley is a hotel that attracts business travelers, but, but what are people going to want? Even that first business trip, after you have been grounded for so long, feels like a celebration. Yes. Getting out, getting back to, to a little experience. bit of normalcy, getting out with your friends, it, it all feels, every bit of, of, of life, sort of normal life that we're able to recapture or the reimagined life, it's, it's a celebration. So that's our, what we hung our hat on, was causing celebration, channeling that excitement of the sort of modern or new south that Atlanta represents um, and and really that idea of showing up and and showing out and kind of what is your statement piece to Bashar's point was was how we developed that concept to speak to what the pandemic was you know the post pandemic and breaking pandemic. the mold like I, I don't know any business traveler young or old who says I really want to go to a very boring quiet beige hotel right yeah. and it's funny we stick them in it and it's like, listen, just because I'm on business, I'm not Jekyll and Hyde. Like, I'm the same person. I, wa I want to see interesting art. I want to look at interesting fabrics. I want to be in a warm, welcoming place that makes me feel special. Don't stick me in a beige on beige on beige on beige box just because it's a business hotel. And there's this, this word that's getting thrown around now in a sort of, I hope, in a, one of the positive changes of the pandemic is pleasure, right? Like, I go on business. That doesn't mean that I should go from the plane to the Uber to the hotel to the office and back. I'm going to take a little you know, detour and go to the museum and go check out the band and go to this pub that I've heard about and whatever. So, so I think, again, I think, I hope, I hope that a lot of those people that did that are re will realize that by the time you close your eyes and reopen them, you're old. Life is a one-time thing. It's a short thing. You got to take advantage of it. How could you ever, like I know people literally that have been to pick a city 20 times. And I say, have you ever been to the whatever? No, I never leave. I go to my hotel and I, yeah. you've been to whatever 20 yeah. times. And you've never experienced anything outside. But of this, routine. boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. That, that seems like really sad. And when you think about how precious life is, you're missing out on so much. So I think, again, the idea is slow down, slow mm -hmm. everything down, slow everything way down and enjoy the moment. And I think hotels are at the epicenter of that. And instead of thinking of yourself as a commodity hotel, I'm just here as a room and a shower, which is what a hotel is at the end of the day. I want to be part of this experience for you, but I want to kick you out my door. I want you out exploring the neighborhood. I'm just a place that you rest your head in at, but I want to help you extend that trip and really make it an experience. And I should be an integrated part of that experience. Like you should feel more like you've been to Buckhead when you stay with us in Hotel Coley. You should feel more like you've experienced that place. Because even if your time is short, we should bring it to you. It should be when, immersive. Immersive yeah. experience. Immersive authentically. Mm -hmm. Authenticity is be your damn self. Whether yeah. people like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's who you are, that's it. And I think that applies in a hotel construct. Like If you're going to do something, do it well and be all in on it. Mm -hmm. Don't just tip your toe in the water. And so you guys, do you guys do not only just the entire, like the consulting and planning as well? Or, or, is, it, or is it just is it after they've already established no, 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 no. Worst thing, worst thing. We yeah. want you to hand us the brand new baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll dress it. We don't have that. We'll, <laughs> we'll potty train we it. We'll do whatever we need to we do. Don't want the no, 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 no. You can the have the teenager. We, yeah, the value we bring is, is in being a collaborative partner and helping Absolutely. to bring all the people to the table and assemble that team of in brand experts and, and F&B concept and interior designer and, and really help craft that whole story, we kind of bridge that and, and bring it. And it has to be together. holistic, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you know, it, 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 then you can't, I, you can't buy your own jacket and then I buy you the pants and she yeah. buys you the oh, shoes. It's going to be a disaster. Yeah. You have to really, it has to, like a concert, it has to work well together. So I might be jumping ahead, but you know, inquiring minds want to know. So I would imagine you guys do this. Like you say, you have the new baby. Um, 
down the line. Create your own hotel? So we are working in fact. Okay. Thank there you. There you go. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I, 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 I felt it. I, <laughs> we, we are working on creating a brand of our own. Uh, we are trying to not just be another because yeah. God knows I've, I've been quoted a thousand times saying this industry needs another brand like we need a hole in the head. And the reason why is because they've become, they've become the same. So I, one of my neurotic things that I do is I never stay in any hotel more than once or one night. So if I'm in New York three times, I move three nights, I move three times. Okay. Every single time. Three different hotels. So you're the person to ask. So uh, you, go, New York, I'm your guy. Well, I'm mostly anywhere, but generally New York. I just stayed in my 206 hotel in Manhattan. So I go to New York for three nights. I stay in three different hotels across the spectrum. I wake up on the fourth morning. I say, if I were to take all the signage off of those buildings, shuffle it up and put them back up randomly... I couldn't tell you the difference. They all start looking the same. And I think the problem is our industry is such an industry of lemmings, I call them, those, those Arctic rodents that one jumps off the cliff and the rest follow blindly. We just follow each other. We keep copying each other. And although there's a lot of ingenuity in the industry, to, your, to our earlier point, you do something and it gets copied and copied and copied and all of a sudden it's not interesting anymore. So what we're trying to do is find white space in our industry to fill that's not super sexy and exciting where everybody wants to jump jump in to my earlier point about really thinking about the future and sustainability not in the recycling sense but a business that's sustainable for the future not the las vegas nightclub model where it's up for three nights and it's over and it's you do it again so we're trying to find something that has long meaning and long resonance and we're working on that brand meanwhile that brand will require management and we have the team and the skill set that we'll keep honing every day and by the way we literally learn every i personally been in this business for i don't know 25 years i learn every single day ultimately we want to take what we truly believe in and manifest it through something we craft and hopefully with others that will come along on the ride with us but that doesn't preclude us from doing what we're doing today which is offering a different way to think about management taking the transactional part away because by the way lots of great people that do it much better than we ever will but at the end of the day we're all a clean room is a clean room right like there's no two ways about it it's either clean or dirty the books are either good or they're not good plenty of people that do that right we think the differentiator is that extra piece that we will then weave into our brand i mean that's that that sounds like that's a good time to. That's right. I mean, I mean, I don't want to. If I ask another question, I, that, that sounds like that's drop a the great, mic, right? I know. <laughs> Boom.